I had the distinct pleasure of interviewing Dr. Jeanette Mahoney. She's an associate professor of neurology and associate director of the Division of Cognitive and Motor Aging. Dr. Mahoney is also the founder of Jet Enterprises Incorporated, which is a startup company spun from her research at Einstein. With this startup, she has created the first quantitative multisensory test of its kind to predict falls, all with her app called Catch You. With a, a technology that I am familiar with, Catch You, we would be able to, in theory, assess one's fall risk and potentially risk for Alzheimer's disease. Is that correct? Yeah, all by taking a 10 minute test. And these are, you know, some of this work is done, other is in process. But the idea here is with our robust findings that I've just walked you through, what we've done is we've taken the, the guesswork out of it. We've taken the exact standardized apparatus from the lab and we've put it on an iPhone. And what happens is we could have our providers or healthcare professionals or anybody who's interested in sort of um, helping people reduce uh, the, the potential for a fall, have them test their clients, see how they fare on this test. And if we get this sort of negative dip in that probability wave where we're seeing they're not integrating well, well, now we're on high alert. Now we need to know that we need to do something. The CDC has put forth tons of recommendations, right? They have done their homework. They have done many scientific, hundreds of studies to come up with what are the best ways to mitigate, excuse me, the chance of having a fall. The problem is that's not being implemented in clinical world right now. I mean, I know places where they basically ask the patient during their annual wellness visit when they're supposed to be screened for falls, do you have a fear of falling and do you have or have you had a fall in the past one year? You could say yes to both of those answers and they could be checked off, but that might not lead to anything else. So the idea behind Catch You was to be able to take this test, which we know is so profound, bring it to doctors to have them order it for their patients or any healthcare provider, and allow them to see not only how well do they do on this test, but what sort of medical comorbidities do they have? Um, you know, they sort of answer some demographic questions before they take the test. And then what happens is algorithmically, we determine which would be the best recommendations for the provider to consider relaying to the patient to help them avoid um, having a fall. It could be as simple as, you know, you're not doing so well. It looks like you would really benefit from, you know, doing some physical therapy to, you know, to uh, increase your balance performance or maintain those core muscles or work on gait. You know, it could be that, you know what, I really want home health safety to come into your house and assess for uneven surfaces and, you know, determine if you need grip bars in the shower or, you know, handrails, anything that could help, you know, um, help these people not have a fall is huge. And once we have the data and the publications and the scientific support that doesn't indeed link multisensory integration to, um, you know, no, well-known biomarkers to AD, that same test could let us know if this person is also um, at risk for a cognitive impairment because we know that there's this intersection between all of those things. Sensory, motor, cognitive function. The brain is wired. You can't talk about the brain and, and like any one particular part of it without seeing it as a network. And so those three main functions are huge and they all sort of, if true, lead if they're all directed by this prefrontal cortex and that's sort of what's being attacked in Alzheimer's disease, then we sort of understand why, you know, when one light goes out, they all go out. Yeah, yeah. No, this is this is really fascinating work that you have done. Uh, something that is as convenient that can be done on an iPhone. Uh, now, I know people listening to this, uh, listening to the information about Catch You, are going to be wondering, can I jump on and can I can I do the test? I want to do the test. Can I do it for myself? Um, is there any place that the in, an in, individual viewer can go? and give this a shot, or do they have to do it through a healthcare provider? Right now, we're sort of doing it through providers only because the, some of the reports are a little bit complicated. And it's like the idea of having the healthcare professional is that they know the history, they can look at the recommendations and say, you know, basically, Emma, I know that this, these top three are the ones that you should pay attention to, because it's a lot of information, right? So we're trying to start it in 
with geriatricians and with neurologists. We're also um, finding that it's helpful in um, skilled nursing facilities. Um, and we've gotten, because we're listed as a wellness device, because we really don't cause any or pose any harm to taking a simple iPhone test or an Android test because it's on both, we don't need FDA clearance. So we're listed as a wellness device. So it tapped into like people that are really interested in, um, you know, maintaining physical fitness like yourself or, you know, naturopath or um, personal trainers, um, nutritionists, those sorts of people that um, have a clientele that are really sort of, you know, might hear from their patients or their clients that they're, you know, have concerns about the way they're thinking or the way they're walking or their balance or falls. Those are the types of people, you know, that they can go to to start getting this test um, completed. I really support this, uh, especially that you said that you mentioned uh, you mentioned that uh, it's a complicated diagnosis sometimes or suggestions are a little complicated. I think it's wise that it's only available through providers uh, such as personal trainers and healthcare professionals, just because of the risk of Dr. Google that happens when an individual all the time, all the time. Let me keep Googling till I find the answer I want. <laughs> exactly. To my viewers out there. That this is an exceptional reason why she's making sure that it is not currently available to uh, the individual level. 100% support her decision to do this. B backing off of what you would be able, your ca the catch you software that you have created, uh, that is something that so many people, they don't even know. They don't even know that they'd be considered a fall risk. I have individuals in their 40s that are fall risks off based off of 60 year old data. So meaning data for 60 year old. And that's, yes. I use the um, 30 second sit to stand. Mm -hmm. I have found that individuals in their forties are as at a, at, ranked at a fall risk based on the information for the cohort of 60 and older. Wow. So it's pretty amazing. And the people, if you'd ask them that answer that they'd put on the doctor's office checklist of, would you be considered a fall risk or you're afraid of falling? They'd say no, 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 no. And that's the whole idea. So the, the tagline for our test is before you fall. So we want to catch you before you fall. And we want to do it in a way that has a quantitative test that actually provides a window to the brain to see how the brain is functioning. It sort of eliminates the guesswork eliminates the need for somebody to watch you take the test. It's so simple. You really just respond as quickly as possible. And all of the things that your brain is doing to make that response are captured in this simple test. And that's why we like it. And the fact that it can be done remotely and that the, the doctor can benefit in providing um, each client with the best fall prevention plan that's individually tailored uh, based on their performance and their medical comorbidities is, is what we thought would be key and sort of trying to maybe try to take a stab at reducing this $50 billion a year uh, annual cost that the U.S. spends alone in falls. Like, why is it so high? How come we're not, you know, getting rid of that? And that's really something I strive to do. And I really do it all in the name of my grandma. Yes. I wanted to ask you, can you elaborate on your inspiration? I, I saw a, a bit on your grandmother and it's really, I, I would love to hear more about your inspiration. Well, my grandma had a fall um, which led to like sort of her demise. Um, and she's no longer with us. And I think about her all the time. And she was always the one who would be like, Jeanette, a body in motion stays in motion. Gotta walk, gotta do this. So she was a firm believer of that. So when, you know, she was pretty fit and active and, you know, did lots of things. She, she played mahjong, she loved cards, you know, she exercised, she did all the things, but she had a fall because falls are multifactorial and you can't always predict them. Um, and when I started realizing how strong our results were here at the lab, I was like, Grams, I owe this to you. I got to get this out here to the people so that we can start reducing falls and having, you know, once a person falls, it's likely they'll fall again. They wind up breaking a hip, then they become socially isolated. And it just becomes a downward spiral that leads to a mess. It's a huge burden on the family, huge burden on the individual. So my goal is to try to stop this. Uh, before it becomes a real problem. Um, and yeah, do it all for her. I'm I'm sorry that for your loss. I want to say that first, but I love this story because I have to share, it's very similar to why I got into fitness also, the functional fitness, I should say, specifically for older adults. 
my Grammy, uh, my, my Grammy was one of the reasons why I dove deep into this route. Before all this, I was going to be a veterinarian and I definitely completely changed for a lot of different reasons, but I started noticing my Grammy went downhill and exactly what you shared of a fall happens and then it can keep happening. Things just go downhill. A fall happened for her and then another fall and then another fall and then a stroke. And it it just, it's here, here we are, you and I are both in completely different places in the world, completely different experiences, but we still have that as something unique or, or not unique, but similar. And I think that's a testament to the fact that this is so prevalent. This is everywhere. It's happening. There's there's so much that can't be done in some ways if an individual, uh, my Grammy was not active (laughs) and and she kind of lost it. She didn't really have much interest in it. So it was really challenging to encourage her. My mom became a yoga instructor trying to get her to move. (laughs) And my mother teaches chair yoga for seniors. My Grammy has passed away, um, but, but there's so many people that are out there ready to improve their lives, wanting of change, but they don't quite know what the problem is, that they're not quite sure what the problem is, that they have a problem and then they don't know what to do. I love your story. It's just, I really do. It's, 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 it's so common, you know, one in four people. Is that the statistic? One in three, one in three now. Mm -hmm. So I think we do share a similar mission, really, that that, you know, strives to raise fall awareness and and improve the well-being of, you know, older adults and all people. Right. I mean, I know that you have listeners that are younger and would like to start working on this now. And then there are, you know, people maybe in their late 50s or early 60s trying to figure out retirement that, you know, want to know that what can I do now so that I can really enjoy retirement and not have like a broken hip or, you know, some sort of major operation that, you know, could have been prevented had I exercised more, how I had I eaten better. We know things work. The question is what works the best, whether it's some combination and what do we really need to do? And I think that we've answered some of those questions, but I think more science is done to sort of nail down specifically here what could be done to increase multisensory integration because I'm not sure yet is it sensory training you know I was reading up on your vibration training that could be something that you know that 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 can have an effect as well I don't know but once we figure out where in the brain I think we can you know then begin to test uh, all of these separately and collectively and come up with the best regime or regimen to um, to make sure that we can do our best to help people prevent falls. Yes. Yes. Jeanette, you are the mark of a true scientist, respected (laughs) scientist in in my eyes, because the best scientist is able to say, we don't know. And that the the scientists that that say, we know it's this because this is what it used to say. They're not scientists. So (laughs) you are just so incredibly amazing. Are are there any articles, research studies we get to look forward to uh, as as the audience, the readers of your work? Anything coming up that we should be keeping our eyes peeled for? Yeah, I think the the the, the data that I showed you here on linking this as a, a new behavioral marker for for. Um, Alzheimer's disease will be a a really good paper that comes out later this year. Um, We do have on our website, um, catchyou.net, we do have a publication list there and it sort of shows, uh, you know, some of the the papers that I that I highlighted here, if people want a deeper dive, my information is there, they can email me as well. And, um, you know, as we as we make progress, with the commercial end, we have a news column there too, where we constantly update things. And one of our latest news bits is that um, we're actually have made it into the up-to-date reference book, which a lot of doctors use. uh, And they sort of now talk about the potential of multisensory integration as being a new useful tool for predicting falls. So that was a big win for us. We're very happy with that. Congratulations. That is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this interview just as much as I did. For more information and to stay posted on the publications by Dr. Mahoney, please click the links in the description below.
I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, for individuals that are concerned about their fall or have already received the suggestion by their healthcare provider that they should work on improving their balance. I do offer custom one-on-one -on -one programs at the recording of this video, and I do offer pre-made programs as well. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Always remember, your health is an investment, not an expense.